I'm John Nowatsky. I'm an NDSU, North Dakota State University Agricultural Machinery Extension Specialist, so my focus area is in extension. Uh, I've been working with uh, unmanned aircraft, uh, what we call a proof of concept project at our Carrington research site in uh, East Central North Dakota. What we're doing is flying all of the available crop and livestock research at our Carrington site on a weekly basis, uh, trying to find out uh, what is uh, effective and possible to do with unmanned aircraft and, and maybe what's not so possible, what's, what's not working out well. Uh, we've started this in May. It's a collaborative project with uh, the uh, Aerospace Department at the University of North Dakota and with the Northern Plains UAS test site, which is one of the six uh, FAA test sites set up to uh, integrate unmanned aircraft into the manned aircraft space. So what we're doing is trying to uh, do a, what we call this proof of concept project. Um, we're working with several uh, agronomists agronomy researchers and livestock researchers at our, at our NDSU Carrington Research Site, seeing if we can pick up from the air what these researchers are finding on the ground. For, you know, for example, uh, the researchers do a stand counts on corn and wheat when it comes out of the ground uh, when it's in the one and two leaf stage. We're flying and taking those same plots, counting them with a computer to see how accurate we are with the imagery finding that we're, we're just as accurate as walking out there, uh, counting them on the ground. We're, using, we're looking at uh, uh, disease symptoms in crops. We're looking at weed infestations in, in, in crop fields, crop plots. Uh, we're using full color imagery, uh, full color red, green, blue cameras. We're using uh, infrared cameras and we're using thermal imaging cameras. Uh, each of them have their opportunities to show us different um, problems in fields and helping us to recognize uh, the difference between different kinds of vegetation, different quality of vegetation, different quantity of vegetation. On the livestock end, we're using thermal imagery to look at uh, animal body temperatures. So we're using it to see if we can uh, pick out animals that are in heat that could be used for, uh, you know, which animals are ready for artificial insemination. Picking up animals with fevers, to pick up, to see if we can uh, identify animals that are potentially getting sick before you can actually see them from, uh, uh, by walking through them. And again, we're able to correlate that data to the data that's being collected by our researchers on the ground. Uh, our data is uh, not complete yet. We're just starting. We expect to publish our results by the end of this calendar year in November and December. The data will be available both on, on uh, our website and on the uh, Carrington Research Extension Center website. I think one of the uh, most important things is that it has to have an autopilot. It has to g have the a GPS associated with it. The, uh, a computer can fly these fields uh, more accurately than anybody can with uh, manned controls. So I think the first and most important uh, uh, factor is that each of these unmanned aircraft has to be autonomous. Uh, obviously we're going to be able to, we're going to have to be able to take over the controls of the aircraft if there's a, uh, another aircraft that comes into place or if there are you know, birds or whatever. But the most important thing, it has to be, a, it has to have that autopilot. Then uh, I think uh, depending upon what kind of uh, application you're using for crops, fixed wing aircraft are going to be uh, more usable because they can stay in the air for up to an hour and uh, capture a section of land, 640 acres in an hour, and do that with one or two centimeter resolution. So I think fixed wing are going to be better for, for uh, crop scouting. Uh, I think the rotocopter type aircraft would probably be better for, um, for you know, specific areas and also for livestock monitoring. Um, I think uh, another issue that, that farmers are going to have to look at in the plains at any rate is wind. How, come, how much wind can these uh, uh, unmanned aircraft operate in? And I know we've flown the, uh, the uh, fixed wing aircraft in 30 mile an hour winds and it worked very effectively. Uh, on the other hand, 
Uh, 15 mile an hour winds for the rotocopter is about the limit to where they can operate. So I think we've learned that. I think another issue that's uh, huge is data management, data processing, and data analysis. And all those things are different. The, the, the data uh, management is just being able to take the amount of data that you're collecting in a field for, a, uh, say, one field, a 100-acre field, you might collect two or three gigabytes of data. And if you're going to transfer that uh, from a rural area to someone that's going to be processing that for you, you have to think in terms of, of transferring that data on the internet. And a, a slower cellular modem network might take two or three hours to transfer the information from, from one day's flight. Then data uh, processing is another issue. Most of these uh, unmanned aircraft, uh, the, most of the applications with unmanned aircraft were capturing high resolution imagery, uh, 100 acres, field might be uh, 100 different photographs or 200 different photographs depending upon the, the resolution, depends on the camera. So if you have all of those images, you need to be able to prepare to, you know, what we call stitch them together into one mosaic. And again, that takes computer processing uh, power. It also takes time. It, it's easy to spend an hour processing one field if you have very high resolution. Then lastly, the analysis of that. Something, somebody has to take that imagery and process it into information that the grower, or the farmer, or the rancher can use in their management. So for example, just being able to, to do a stand count, you have to be able to choose some kind of a software that's going to count the different individual plants. If you're going to prepare a, a fertilizer application map, you have to have some kind of a processing some kind of an analysis uh, software that can give you a, a map that can be used for variable rate application. So I think that's an opportunity. It's certainly a business opportunity for people to process uh, imagery for, for uh, growers, for agronomists, for, for agribusiness companies, and to analyze it and then supply that information back to the, to the grower for them to use. Um, in addition to that, I think uh, there may be uh, opportunities to capture imagery on a large basis. Uh, right now, uh, it's not possible to fly unmanned aircraft on a commercial basis, but if FAA changes those rules to make it possible, it would be uh, very easy to come up with an aircraft that could stay in the air for eight hours and fly uh, thousands of acres in one day. And I think there's, a, there's I see that as a future possibility for unmanned aircraft because uh, as opposed to satellite imagery, it's high resolution and it's real time. It can be delivered the same day or the next day.